So we will start today with uh, Julio. And please tell, tell us about the Maya culture and how cacao still plays a role in your traditions and share the story of your business, the farm, and the production of cacao. Well, good evening, everybody, or good afternoon. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here and to be talking to you all. I am from Belize. And I'm a Mopan Mayan by descent. We are Mayans. And uh, I own and run a small chocolate factory by the name of Cheil. And our brand of chocolate is Cheil Mayan chocolate. And the word Cheil means wild Mayan, simply because our ancestors were the first persons to have cultivated cacao. And in our area, there is always the story where they meet wild people in the jungle. Us now in the modern Mayas meet these wild people, and these wild people are actually the ancestors. So we want to remember their work forward by giving them the name Cheil to our chocolate bar so that our company now is known as Cho Cheil Chocolate. So if you ever visit Belize, please look for us. We'll be happy to show you around. But before we got into chocolate, I still run and operate a small museum. Um, it's the Maya Center, Maya Museum. And what we do there is a living museum where you get in and you get interactive with the people that are working there. And the objective of this museum is to be able to show you the culture of the Mayan people and let you be a part of it rather than just reading it on paper. You are going to be a part of it. And that's kind of what we do at the museum. But as the, as the work grows along, we then engage ourselves into tours, because then I realize that we have to sustain ourselves. And the only way we can do that is if we offer tours to people like yourselves that wants to learn the Maya culture, wants to know about the people of my area, and then we engage into chocolate. And chocolate then just blows my mind. And today, I'm still indulgent to chocolate. I just love chocolate. But we grow the actual cacao ourselves. We have um, farms where we grow cacao, and once the cacao are grown, we then go literally, I go personally and pick the cacao from the tree, break the pods open, take the bean out, we ferment the beans, collect the juice from the bean to turn it and ferment it into wine, and then we can take the bean and then we roast it once it's dried. So it's a whole process by itself that we do. But before we go into the commercial production, I also love to do the traditional method of chocolate production, which is using the traditional grinding stone the way our ancestors do, and we still make today the traditional chocolate drink filled with spices, and even with chili. It's a great thing to have. And that we continue doing today. So we produce not only chocolate bars, but we also produce um, a variety of products, like cacao tea, cocoa powder, uh, nibs, and other canola, chocolate canola, all kinds of little products that we make. Well, I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the, the production of cacao. We've just looked at pictures of the cacao pod growing on the tree, and I understand the trees are in the shade, which would be important to note. It's not like it's a row of a, a farm kind of thing. And um, here we have a whole pile of pods. Okay. And then, so could you talk a little bit about what happens when you open the pod okay. and, and the next couple steps? Sure. Um, so. The, the, the process of chocolate making is very complex. It's not just getting into chocolate and then you have a chocolate. It's, 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 very, uh, it's very challenging. But for, for you to get there, you're going to have to know exactly what to do. So here's what happens. Um, even just the environment around us reacts with the, with, with, with the pods itself. So when the pods are broken open, there's that white fluffy thing that is in the inside. It's known as the pulp. Inside the pulp is where the chocolate is nestled, but it's, a, it's raw. It's, it's not even tasting like chocolate, but there's only one thing I can guarantee you, it is bitter. So once you open the pod, the natural air around us kickstarts fermentation automatically because it has yeast, it has sugar, it has acids that is necessary for fermentation, so it does it by itself. So whenever this fermentation takes place, the pulp around it disintegrates. It turns into water, it turns into liquid. That liquid is known as the cacao juice. So we take that bean, I mean the pulp, we take it and we dump inside a box that holds 500 pounds, 200 pounds of beans, and let it sit there for six days. 
it is necessary to go through fermentation. Fermentation is really what brings out the flavor of chocolate inside because the, 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 the bean in itself in the pot does not have flavor of chocolate. And the only way that will develop is if you ferment it. And during the fermentation, temperature rises. It depends on how much sugar is in your bean that rises the temperature high or low. But given it's about 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and you keep it there for six days, and you turn it constantly. You have to turn it, otherwise you'll be making wine. You don't want wine, you want cacao beans to be chocolate flavored. So once it's in there for six days, seven days reach, automatically you take it out, and you put it in, into drying into the natural sun. So that that sun cooks the beans, evaporating all the alcohol that is in there, and give it more added flavor, and then you have raw, cacao. Now that is flavored more leaning towards chocolate. Once you have that, you test it and it's in there, you like it. The next step you go through now is you take the bean and it goes into roasting. Roasting is the only other process where you can make or break your chocolate. So this is where your skill is most important. And once you understand what roasting is and you know what you're looking for, you're looking for taste, you're looking for quality, you're looking not only that, but when you roast, you can also taste the beans and you're tasting for acidity. There's acid in there. So you keep roasting and every time you go longer roasting, the acid goes down and then a nice, beautiful aroma comes out. That's because you're reaching to the end of where your chocolate should be roasting. Finally, you're going to hear a lot of cracking inside the, the, the roaster. That means your beans are finished. Take it out slowly, let it cool down, break open the bean, eat the inside, you have 100% dark chocolate nestled inside that shell. That's now known as your nibs. But you can eat your chocolate right from there without any problem. It's bitter, but bitter is good. So that's kind of like how the chocolate is processed from the pod to the actual bean that is now ready to go into crunching. So the crunching part is you take the nibs, you grind it down, and the next step to that is known as a paste. And that piece is known as a chocolate liquor. Now, I don't know why they call it chocolate liquor, but my guess is because it contains some level of, of alcohol flavor, which is the wine from fermenting. But that has to be conched, and once it's conching, you know, then a lot of the final flavor is developed by the heat that, 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 that's developed in the machine that does the conching. So it's basically two um, granite stone wheels that rolls over a stone bottom and goes for a, some people do it for 48 hours, some people do it for 72 hours. It depends on what you, you, you are looking for. If you're looking for texture, they need to go longer, but if you're looking for flavor, then you have to know when to stop it. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a secret of chocolate making that steps in then to um, how it is finally produced into candy bars. But, but that's basically the process. And once it's conched, then you can now ready to flavor, you can add your sugar, if you want sugar, or your bean, or vanilla, whatever. And that then is taken and placed into molds, then turn into candy bars. And then you're ready to eat your chocolate. So it's my understanding the only, about the only piece of machinery you have is the conching machine. Yes, at, back home at Chael Chocolate Factory in Belize, I only have the conching machines. That's all I buy. Everything else we make ourselves, we manufacture, they're very, they're very basic equipment because in Belize, the, we have difficulty in sourcing the, the, the machineries we need. So what we have to do is we have to take, twist, bend, adapt, and make it work. But we make most of our machines. We make our roaster, our own roaster. We make our own press to press the oil out so we can get cocoa butter. Have you heard about cocoa butter? We have to press it to get it out ourselves because we do need it. But our, our roasting at home, we do not use a roaster. When I say roaster, we're not talking about a machine. We're talking about a huge clay sheet made from clay. And we can add 20 pounds of beans on it at a time. And then my, 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 my wife turns around and roasts it until it's finished. And the only other reason why I prefer to do my roasting over open flame, over open fire, is because that smoke adds flavor, adds taste to the chocolate. Unlike our electric roaster, it does not give me the flavor I'm looking for. But different people have different way of doing things, but this is how we do ours at the factory. 
But yeah, you should. You all should come join us, and you should make your own chocolate. It's truly an art, I think. <laughs>